Welcome back to Secret Shopper, where we go undercover to find who delivers the best value gaming experience. We're gonna be having a look at just what arrived in the mail. We're gonna unbox these systems and what an experience I'm expecting that to be. They came in everything from a cardboard box to a wooden shipping crate. We're gonna crack them open and we're gonna see who delivered on their promises and who fell short. <laughs> Some of them didn't promise much. Not the way Dbrand, our sponsor, promises to make your phone look beautiful and stand up against incidental scuffs and scratches. Also, you can now buy my face and put it in your pocket right next to your junk. Yep, I don't know why you want to do that, but you can. They're doing a limited edition drop with two LTT options, face and sticker bomb. Check it out at LTTstores.com. That's LTT stores with an S, freaking trolls. Dell, once again, was one of the least impressive of our PC builders. And probably the worst thing about it from a Dell standpoint was that they didn't even manage to send us to their gaming division, Alienware. So dude, we really did just get a Dell. <laughs> Packing here, I would say is a B at best. It's environmentally friendly, but in terms of the protection for the system, I would call this mediocre at best. Power cable, and then the really cheap keyboard and mouse that if it wasn't a gaming system, I'd say, yeah, sure, this is fine. This probably won't end up in an e-waste bin, but it'd be nice if they had kind of a step up. Then again, maybe they do, but they forgot to sell us an Alienware, so. Without asking, Dell went with a mid-tower case, and from a cost perspective, that makes sense. As you shrink components down, they tend to get more expensive. And as you get bigger, there tends to be just more raw material involved. So MATX is a good middle ground from a manufacturing standpoint. This is, man, there's almost nothing that I look at about this and I go gaming though. Like on the back, look at this weak cooling. 80 millimeter fan? When's the last time you saw an 80 millimeter fan, like unironically in a brand new computer? Yeah, what about the power supply? And what power supply standard is this? No. I had no idea. Graphics card, we got uh, six USB ports on the back. Presumably gigabit LAN. Not even like the full complement of six audio jacks. What year is it? So I think this is actually like the same computer that we bought for like the go to Best Buy and spend a thousand dollars. It's the same idea, but maybe a little bit more souped up because we spent some more money. Souped up, you say? Yeah. That does not look very souped up to me, sir. But look at the outside, it's so nice. Wow, that cooler, that's better than I was expecting. You know, the cooler, that's a, a three heat pipe cooler with, uh, looks like, a fan that might even be a 92 millimeter fan, actually. The, the CPU cooler fan might be bigger than the case fan. <sighs> Doesn't look like it would be fun to get out of there to fix though. And there's almost no other cooling in this system. There's an air intake at the front, and this power supply, like why are they, what is that, like flex? It's 80 plus platinum though. Wow. Okay, all right, Dell. You know what? The system arrived in 12 days. That's 12 days days, not business days. So I would consider that to be a pretty reasonable amount of time. And oh my God, why does it have a hard drive? I actually kind of forgot what was in this thing. <laughs> Wait, no, that's a line item for the sticker. No. Yeah, look, gonna make sure you get the right one. This is interesting. Remember that video we did recently on the ATX 12 volt only standard? Well, Dell has already gone ahead and transitioned. So this proprietary power supply here isn't for no reason at all. It's actually not using the traditional ATX connector. So all we've got here is a 12 volt six pin connector, and then two more four pin 12 volt connectors up here. So the power supply only delivers 12 volt power. That's probably how they managed to hit 80 plus platinum. Yeah. And relatively small... inexpensively. What is this, a GTX 1650 in here? It's a... 1660 Ti, sorry. So that is quite a bit better, but not great for the price. No. One of the things that we put together for each of the systems is a comparable system on PC Part Picker. There is some things that are actually better about this system. Now you'll notice on this system, we actually have a proper SSD. Oh. That is not a proper SSD. That is DRAMless AF. Got it. And for just $1165.98 with a $40 mailing rebate. That's rough. Not looking great, yeah. 
Wow, I'm actually surprised that the power supply I spec is worse than the one in here. <laughs> I went Is for it? a 500 watt gold. Okay, all right. So credit to Dell for you know moving to the new 12 volt only standard, and credit to Dell for the wiring in the case. Super clean, super clear, and some of it is even pre-run for things that you don't have installed out of the box. Like these two and a half inch bays up here, if you wanted to add some more solid state storage in the future, just run that across, and the power cables are already run for you. <laughs> no there's, display. Yeah, there's no display output. I'm pretty sure this is a 10700K though, so you could have output, I think. It's a KF. Okay, so the only reason I didn't do the KF is because pricing <laughs> online was like all over the place. The KF is stupid if you're just buying the parts directly because Intel doesn't really discount it compared to the one that does have onboard graphics. On the subject of upgradability, the main ones are the drives, graphics card, uh, the SSD right here, it doesn't look like there's a secondary M.2 slot anywhere on this board. And memory. To Dell's credit, there's four slots on here, so you could conceivably upgrade to 64 gigs of RAM without actually throwing away the included stick. But this included stick is a bit of a problem in a couple of ways. Number one, one stick, no dual channel operation. What are you guys doing? And number two, this is DDR4 3200 megahertz memory, but because this system is using a cheaper B-series chipset, it's actually capped at 2933. Although I don't know who to thank for that more, Dell or Intel. <laughs> this is weird. My 8-pin connector is just kind of like jammed in here, like it wasn't slid together properly. It's a pretty easy fix. You just have to take the thing and like slide it on properly. It's just a really careless thing to not do in the first place. Overall expectations for this thing, pretty low. I'm expecting it to be quiet, but not have great thermals and not have great performance. Let's move on. HP might not have much in terms of like corporate sex appeal, but what they did at least manage to do is direct us to their Omen brand of gaming desktops that at least tries to have a little sex appeal. Credit to HP for their packing. They don't waste any material here, but they still manage to have a nice thick layer of this really soft and flexible foam in between the system and the outer box. In terms of included accessories, we've got a pretty basic package here. So like your quick start guide and power cable. Is this the same keyboard? Look at the cable, it's way nicer. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, it's fine. It's a free add-on, all right? Okay, all right, all right, free keyboard. Is this the same mouse? No, it's a different mouse. Different mouse? Okay, well, ooh, it might be worse. Yeah. Feel that click. It was free, it's like a free t-shirt. All right, all right, all right. We are off to a much better start already here, ladies and gentlemen. Whoa. Whoa. Is that tempered glass? Does that actually look like a regular computer? That's tempered glass. Whoa. It's not even acrylic. Dang. Tempered glass side panel. To be clear, I wouldn't be as impressed if they were like a boutique system builder, but like, it's like HP we're talking about here. How long did it take to get here? Well, this one's a little interesting. Now, like last time, they canceled our order again because we used Google Voice to call, but this time they didn't tell us. We didn't get an email or a phone call or anything. I don't think they told us last time either, actually. They, they just canceled it. I was like, oh, everything's here except the HP one. And I go online, had to make an account to check the order, and then it shows us canceled. I'm like, what the heck? So it turns out they're actually out of stock on this model and we had to buy it from Best Buy, which means we don't really have a good date for how fast it would have came, but... Um, Your mileage may vary. Yeah. We've got two front USB 3 ports, front audio, power button. I really like this case. Yeah. You know, it's not over the top or anything, but it's just pretty stylish. Black cables? Yeah, like, I, I, I'm liking it. They use the stock cooler. Thank you, HP. Yeah, like why reinvent the wheel, right? <laughs> One button for internal access. Pop that tempered glass side panel off just like that. Dang! Looks like a standard ATX power supply. So big plus there. Uh, pretty uh, mediocre rear I.O., so six USB ports. Uh, two of them are 10 gig and one's Type-C though, so that's nice. The Dell had Type-C on the front though, which this didn't, so give or take there. Uh, nothing special in terms of audio, Ethernet, at least it has Ethernet, I guess. That's not saying much. Oh, really? Again with the single channel memory. What is this? 
Oh, and it only has two slots. HP, what are you doing? You go, you go and design a motherboard. You go to all the effort to design a motherboard with two memory slots, and you only populate one of them. You get it's HyperX though. You gotta get the HyperX in there. Another strike against HP is that they're using a last gen, so a ninth gen Intel Core i7 processor. It's a 9700. I mean, to be clear, that's still fast CPU for gaming and everything. It's just, why last gen? Uh, maybe they got a deal on them? Like, I don't really know. We've got 512 gigs of a significantly better SSD, although we'll have to see if that actually translates into any usability improvements. One terabyte drive, this custom motherboard that they didn't even bother to put a chipset cooler on, which is like, probably fine, but why? And then a 750 watt, 80 plus platinum power supply. I'm really pleased to see a totally standard configuration that allows you to upgrade pretty much every component of this system, including even the front switches and LEDs are not only using standard pinouts, they're even labeled. So if you were to throw like a, an aftermarket motherboard in here or something like that, you could totally do it. It's standard ATX, except that, wait, did I lie? No, I didn't. The 24 pin connector is just in the weirdest friggin' location ever. I was like, is it ATX 12 volt only again? It's down here. Who puts a 24 pin down there? Again, to HP's credit though, they didn't go into a proprietary power supply with like a four inch 24 pin cable. They just cable managed it. Yeah. So you could go and you could swap this motherboard if you really wanted to. Kudos, 100% kudos. Another nice thing is that A, this is an RTX 2070 Super, a much faster card than what shipped in the Dell, and we squeaked in just under our budget, and B, they've got this great GPU brace included that means the odds of this coming free during shipping look very, very low. Pretty standard blower style card, nothing special there, but I mean, I'm pretty happy with this. 92 millimeter fan, ooh, hold on, I might have spoken too soon. Filtered intake on the bottom though. <gasps> No! Look at that! Magnetic filtered intake. What? Easy cleaning. Whoa! Yeah, right? I wish it had another exhaust at the top or something like that, but it's not bad. At least you got this fresh air coming in from the bottom. The front is solid, so you got fresh air coming in from the... Ooh, these are really small feet for a bottom intake. Ooh! Don't put this thing on carpet. Oh yeah, really don't, because your power supply intake is on the bottom too, and that looks really restrictive. Come on, HP, you guys gotta know better than that. I've got reasonable expectations for this one. What HP got right is the modularity of the components. Any one of them could be swapped out if something went wrong in the future and you weren't covered under warranty. But what they got wrong is a last gen CPU running single channel memory in a case that Honestly, I have pretty low expectations for in terms of thermals. That could come back to bite them, and we're gonna keep a close eye on that in our performance testing. $110 price difference? That's not bad for assembly and warranty. I buy power, coming up next. Whoa! Hey, wow, an RGB keyboard. That looks terrible. That might not actually be RGB either. It's just rainbow all yeah, the Yeah, it might just be red, green, and blue you know, things. I'm not convinced the key switches actually feel much better than the Dell. Check out how the uh, backspace wobbles if I press a key over here. Look how far down the Y key is compared to the T. I have never seen anything like that. We got addressable RGB and what looks to be a bunch of addressable RGB fans. Those are expensive. Yeah. Which I'm sure we discovered when we tried to match this spec in PC Part Picker. Got the manuals included for our just off the shelf components like our X570P motherboard from ASUS. Got a power cable and the Zeus E2 optical gaming mouse for gamers. This is the least horrible feeling mouse so far. You can tell iBuyPower learned their lesson about cheaping out on foam many, many moons ago because this is about as good as it gets. Oh. Step one, removing the side panel, like this or like that. Step two, removing the foam packaging. Step three, check your connections. There should really be like a QR code for a video that I can watch to show me, cause this is like one thing. Like what about all the other connections? So good effort, could be better. Pretty basic front IO, couple USB threes, audio, power button, that's about it. Wow, there's three fans taking an air from the front 
and just a tiny vent here and a tiny vent along the bottom to feed them. That middle fan's gonna be doing basically nothing. Steve from Gamers Nexus would not approve. Nice magnetic removable mesh filter doodad. Not really much point having a filter on an exhaust, but hey, you know, it looks nice. So there's that. Having this little sticker here is a small investment for iBuyPower to make in making sure that their customers don't accidentally plug into the- Oh <gasps> no, it's a paper sticker. Now I can't even put something in my USB port without jamming paper in it. Oh, there's like there's glue all it's over it. It's horrible. <laughs> all right, let's see if I can step up my sticker removal game here and do a bit of a better job. You know, maybe it's all in my technique. Nope, oh. it's actually that bad. Oh no. It's leaving residue. Oh, oh my God, oh, this no. is, what is, <laughs> oh, it's... what a stupid thing you... to get so wrong. You could have bought plugs for like two cents. Way to go, I buy power. Now you're stuck with that. The rear of the case, aside from this horrible residue, looks pretty good though. We've got a good mix of USB 3, including 10 gigabit. We've got four 10 gigabit ports. This is another pretty expensive little trick that can save you a lot of shipping damage over the years. What it does is it supports your graphics card, which is normally one of the most susceptible to shipping damage components. And uh, also the radiator back here and kind of braces them against the side panel so they won't come free during shipping. And it looks like it works just fine. There's a lot of fans in here for the price though. And they're ARGB. Addressable RGB, you say. And they even managed to put dual channel memory in it. Also with RGB, this thing's gonna light up like our Christmas right, tree. Let me take a look, all right? It's got an RTX 2070 Super. This is an MSI model, and assuming we can get enough air into the case, it should do fine with this cooler, even though it's recirculating the hot air inside. And then it's actually got a single 120 millimeter AIO that's got iBuyPower branding that's gonna be taking that warm air and cooling the CPU. Fortunately, the Ryzen 7 3700X doesn't run particularly hot, so my expectations are that it's gonna be fine. 650 watt 80 plus gold power supply. That's an Intel SSD. That's a 660p 512 gig. No hard drive in this one, but given how much better the specs are, the fact that I'm getting like an Asus motherboard instead of you know, some random one with only two slots or like, you know, non-standard connectors on it. It's looking like a pretty good value so far. In fact, compared to our PC part picker, it came in $77, less expensive. The PC part picker Wait, is Wait, and this missing. one doesn't even have RGB fans on it, Jay. Yeah, so if you add the RGB fans, wow. which, I, which I found, there's Cooler Master ones that are 16 bucks. They're even more expensive, sorry. Yeah. Should we turn this one on, even though we didn't turn on the other ones? I wanna see how much it glows. That's very RGB. And it's cheaper. We can't show you guys. Look, you gotta, you gotta watch the next part. We gotta, it's an expensive series. We're buying a lot of computers. That's, that's why we need, we need Dbrand to sponsor it. Oh, we're doing like a custom sticker thing. There's like a Linus face. You know about this, right? There's gonna oh, yeah. be a Linus face skin and then another one that's like way cooler, but. Eh, it wasn't that much cooler. Well, oh, that's subjective. We'll right. let you guys be the judge. With four day shipping, that's incredible. And the best specs we've seen so far, this is I buy Power's race to lose at this point, I think. I was bringing this out to repack it and I noticed something. This panel's dented. I don't think it's dented, it's bulging because there's too many cables back there. Uh, no cables. What do you mean, there's cables right there? That's not to put- Oh uh, yeah, all right. Well, look at it without a- It's dented. Oh, you're opening it before you even see the computer? Well, I'll just, uh, I wanna know, I'm, 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 I'm power. Look, I'm a detective, not a genius. All right, got a mouse. Those are some reasonable if kind of, ooh, these side buttons are mushed. fantastic. Wow, wait, these buttons are totally broken. Pfft. Probably the best keyboard we've seen so far. It's not amazing, to be clear, but. It was free. Got our Wi Fi antenna in there. This one's got Wi Fi. Got the Wi Fi. I mean, the other ones had Wi Fi, but that's fine. These guys, they copy each other's like company name, and then do they copy each other's documentation? They only show one cable here. They're like, oh yeah, check this one. Okay, what about the other ones? Connect your display. Use this, not that. Perfect. Connect all your other crap. All right, not bad. They've got a sticker on the I.O. Better not be crappy. Packing materials, not as good as I buy power. Similar grade of packing material here, but not as thick. And that does make a difference. So you can see at the back, these screws go right to the edge of this foam. So a sharp hit here would hit the screw, transfer that force to the case and potentially dent it. Yeah, it's the same right here too. Now, in fact, 
It got dented. See how that screw's sticking out at a weird angle? That's really dented too. Oof. Yeah, it's kind of rough. In fact, this one's dented. Blue. This one's really dented. This one's a little dented. Like why guys, you surely you gotta like know this stuff, right? Don't you do test shipments? I'm gonna give it its best chance here. Hey. Okay. That looks like a plasticky sticker. Like, okay. Hey, not yeah, bad. Oh wait, the side broke. Ah, oh, dang it. Okay, not perfect, but way better than iBuy Power. Can you just give it a little wipey wipe? There you go, all right. Front panel's dented in too. Is it really? Yeah. Oh, that's pretty rough. Oh, it took a beat. Oh, wow, yeah, it got like kicked or something. Look at this. There's nothing obvious about it, but it is pretty crumply like in there. Yeah. In terms of case design, I've got pretty high hopes for this one. Even though it does have a solid front panel, meaning no ventilation, what it also has is a vent over on the side here that depending on the internal layout, could be all right. Pretty basic front IO, two USB 3s, both type A, power, reset, headphone, microphone, jack, and then rear IO is, well, it's whatever you get on the motherboard, right? But reasonable mix of USB 3, USB 3 10 gig, and USB 2. Uh, for whatever reason, they didn't just go with a motherboard that has built-in Wi-Fi and instead added a Wi-Fi card. Like, is that really a savings, guys? 12 regular days. 12 days, okay. Yeah. All right, not terrible. Not what terrible. What is that plastic? Tempered glass side panel. CyberPower took the same approach to internal packing with one of these expanding Instapack uh, doodads. I figured out why they went this route for Wi-Fi. It's because they're actually using a little MPCIe Wi-Fi card. So those legitimately are cheaper. And then you just get one of these back panels and run the wires like this. In terms of cable management, it's fine. I do not understand their approach to cooling here though. I'm a little confused. Where is the air supposed to come into this case? So you got a solid front panel here, no air coming in there. You got these exhausting, but not directly, right? And there's a gap like that. So they're gonna be just kind of recirculating air from the back panel here and like, I don't know what they're doing. This is exhausting. This is exhausting. They went push pull, even though it doesn't make that much of a difference. You're usually better off with one higher quality fan than two kind of mediocre ones and push pull. To their credit, at least the specs are pretty good. We've got a Core i7 10700K. We've got 16 gigs of dual channel memory. So that's a plus today, apparently, now that half of our contestants haven't gotten that far. 3000 megahertz. They're using a Z490 chipset motherboard, so the RAM will actually run at that speed. That's good. But our graphics card is an RX 5700 XT. Now that's gonna do pretty well compared to the Dell, I think, but HP and iBuy power are, uh, <clears throat> well, let's look at the name. It says Challenger, it doesn't say winner. I haven't been pulling the back panel off all of them, but this one I kind of had to. A, to get a look at the 650 watt 80 plus gold power supply, and B, because CyberPower were the only ones to go with a two and a half inch SSD boot drive. So they went smaller and they went two and a half inch instead of M.2. Not that I'm expecting it to make any difference for games. <gasps> Except it can now, because of direct storage. Way to go, CyberPower. To CyberPower's credit though, they managed to come in $20 lower than if we just bought these parts on PC Part Picker. This one did include the fans properly, so that's good. And then uh, technically if we sent in a $30 mail-in rebate, we could beat it, but who's got time for that? So I've got pretty high hopes for this one, except for that GPU choice and cooling and that our case was dented out of the box. Now for the fun one. I mean, can you imagine someone buying a $1,500 computer and thinking, wow, I should spend $100 on a shipping crate for it. Watch it be the most banged up one. <laughs> should just be broken inside. I'm broken inside. In fairness, this would be very important if this was like a $6,000 machine with like 80 pounds worth of hardline water cooling in it. What even is this? From Origin PC, $50. Thank you for choosing Origin PC. Welcome to the Origin PC family. What are you guys doing? It's a Visa reward? Yeah, it's a virtual credit card. They're, the OmniCard reviews are 1.7 out of five stars. This is our first boutique builder of the lot and I'm already feeling the more one-offness of it. This box is double folded and there's actually a slit here that was made with a knife after the fact. Origin is using a single generic case and then just 
resizing it a little bit for shipping depending on what case the customer chose. Packing material, I would say is like a, I'd say that's a solid A minus. Dude, it came in a crate. Well, no, I mean, oh, right. Yeah, I forgot about that. <laughs> okay, the packing material is an A plus. Oh, got an included mouse pad. Yeah, it was, it was free. <laughs> yeah, it was free, just like the Visa debit card, prepaid debit card. This does actually feel pretty nice. Not that you'll need one, because you're going to be waiting for the LTT mouse pad, lttstore.com. Where'd my free t-shirt go? Oh, here it is. Oh, this actually feels pretty good. Got a, oh, it's Gildan. It smells like these guys just got acquired by Corsair. <laughs> got a Corsair thumb drive in there with your presumably OS. 32 gig thumb drive, though. Free, except that you paid for it. Uh, got some modular cables. This is the first unit to have a modular power supply included for free, except that you paid for it. Their packing is ridiculous. Like this, this is probably at the point where the packing is like 10 to 15% of the cost of this computer. I'm looking for imperfections here. I'm hunting. They're, you're not gonna find them. Got pretty basic front IO. Doesn't headphone look like microphone combo jack. Don't like to see that on a desktop. I prefer to see discrete jacks on a desktop. Uh, the front? USB 3. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Most headsets have a separate But like, thing. it doesn't look like that. I'm still mad. Tempered glass. Tempered glass is now apparently standard. I guess I shouldn't have been quite as impressed when HP had it, but still. I have to remove my 8-pin PCI Express connector in order to get this foam out. Oh, we got a code for fall, guys. Let's dial it back and focus on some positive things here, though. Cable management, it's great. Best we've seen so far, looks fantastic. The cooling configuration, um, unconventional, but better than some of the stuff we've seen for sure. Like I would bet money on it. We've got two intakes here at the top, here at the front, an exhaust right here. The one thing I might've changed is this front one. I'd have probably put it over here so that you're bringing nice fresh air across the GPU. They managed to put dual channel memory in, 3000 megahertz. But what I don't know is even though this is a Z490 series chipset motherboard, so we should have support for 3000 plus megahertz RAM, we are not running a K-series processor. This is the weakest CPU out of all the systems so far. Just a Core i5-10400 6-core, not overclockable or anything like that. So that has the potential to hold them back, or at least it would if we weren't running a GTX 1660 Super. This is also the slowest graphics card we've yet seen. This is interesting. I figured out the $50 gift card. What? There's a current special offer, free shipping plus $50 rewards card with AMD Ryzen. Remember when we tried to buy Ryzen for this thing? <laughs> it was too expensive. <laughs> well, maybe it would have been the cheapest option if they just gave $50 off. Uh. Oh. All right. Storage, we got a 250 gig Seagate Barracuda SSD. They don't specify exactly what kind, but uh, it's not M.2 because there's nothing under there. So I guess it's a two and a half incher. Probably hiding down here in the bottom. Is that and then we got the a one terabyte Origin PC approved hard drive. And it turns out that is a Seagate compute hard drive as well. I mean, there is nothing else much to really say about this puppy. It arrived here in immaculate condition. Uh, oh, how long did this one take to arrive? 24 regular days. Are they really that backed up? How do we factor in Fall Guys? One Gildan t-shirt, yeah. one mouse pad, a lot of the $50 other ones, Visa card. Some of the other ones you got free games with the GPUs though. Why don't we say 1400 bucks? That is a whopping $360 more than putting this together yourself. So you can pay yourself 150 bucks an hour to uh, assemble your own computer. We're on to boutique builder number two, Jay. 14 days. 14 days to arrive. Okay. That's reasonable that's, for a computer. That's reasonable. I think that's fine, especially if it's a custom built affair. A grade foam here, although these thumb screws, you can see they did get pretty close to the edge. Nice magnetic filter on the top. No fans there though. So we're gonna have to have a look at what the cooling configuration is like in here. Three USB 3s and a type C. Got also a headphone microphone jack and power button right there. Illuminated main gear logo on the front. It's a handsome chassis. Not a lot of uh, air intake here. Just this one side here. The bottom is pretty much right down flat against the table. So we'll have to see how that holds up. And rear IO, well, this is where we see how main gear has moved to address the more entry level market. Origin went and cheaped out on core specs. You get a worse graphics card, you get a worse CPU, that sort of thing. And to be clear, 
Main gear specs are still not competitive with what we got from HP, Dell, iBuy Power, those guys, CyberPower for that matter. At least they cost it down, tempered glass panel, in ways that I mostly think make sense. So we went AMD and instead of blowing a bunch of money on a crate and uh, you know, a high-end motherboard, we went with a B450M Pro VDH Max motherboard. So it's an MATX board. You do tend to save a little bit of money like that. Four sticks of memory, that's a really weird one. Are they we can talk gig? more about that later. Um, and we went AMD for our CPU, which honestly, I was expecting more of them to do. AMD, third gen Ryzen is such a great value. Compared to Origin, they managed to get a much better graphics card in the system. This is an RTX 2060 Super, but I'm still expecting it to get beat up pretty badly by the machines with 2070 class cards. And cooling makes a fair bit more sense. We're looking at two 120 millimeter intakes up here at the front. We've got just a stock cooler. Spending money on an AIO for a system in this price point really doesn't make a ton of sense, especially when you consider that they don't perform that well. And then a single, looks like LED lit 120 millimeter exhaust. This is weird. Hold on a second. Can I have a look at this RAM first? What is going on here? Who ships four gig sticks anymore? <laughs> It's 3200 megahertz, CL16, four gig HyperX RAM. Why? I don't know. I wonder if like Kingston was just... They have extra... Oh! Why would you do that? <laughs> what did you... Pardon me, why did you just throw the RAM? Well, I was gesturing. Probably fine. Jeez. All right, all right, all right, all right. <laughs> Like Origin, Main Gear didn't include crummy peripherals, assuming that either you would have your own or you wouldn't be buying an Origin or a Main Gear system. This is not as nice as the Origin mouse pad. Important stuff. Very uh, descriptive. Oh, okay, yeah. Original bracket for the uh, CPU socket so you can install different coolers on it. That's a nice touch. Wait. Got a RGB uh, controller here. Okay, but what do you think the DIY option cost? Ooh. I would say they're probably taking pretty similar margin to origin. So this one was $13.99 yeah. USD, $1,012. Oof. It doesn't feel like it though. A four, I know, because Ryzen. They cheaped out on the right stuff. I mean, well, I shouldn't say that. I mean, this B450 board might not last as long as that higher end Z490 board. Less but expandability. Like, but you can upgrade to Zen 3? That's true, you totally can. Ah, oh, what is up with the side panel? Hey, gentle. Putting the wrong side panel on. That explains it. <laughs> well, we saw everything today. The good, the wood, the worse than wood, the cardboard. All of them arrived in one piece though. So stay tuned for part three, where we're gonna be intentionally bunging up the systems in all the same way and contacting each and every one of these manufacturers tech support to see who can solve our problem the fastest. Speaking of tech support, you gotta contact dbrand if you ever need some tech support with your stickers. They're probably not gonna help you because they're gonna be like, well, we make videos that are so simple an ape could do it and they're on our website, but uh, hey, it's worth a shot. They've got the limited edition LTT drop running right now with both the face and sticker bomb options. I can't believe they called the good one Anthony tier. I guess they really know how to simp for Anthony. You can pick anyway. You can pick them up at lttstore.store. How many f***ing URLs did they buy? If you guys are looking for something else to watch, you can go check out part one, which we've already uploaded, or you can go check out the last time we did this a couple of years ago. It might put some of what we're talking about in context here. We say like, oh, these guys got a lot better. or They got a lot worse. Most of them didn't really get better so far. Yeah, no.